Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. Gene knew he would lose everything. He couldn't pass the math final no matter how much he crammed or prayed. Boxwood Academy had withstood the anxiety of teens for over 100 years. S situated on a hill overlooking a river town and taught both the sons of wealthy people and the smartest boys as long as they were boys. If you were a smart young woman or the wealthy daughter of a rich family, you could go to Boxwood School in the valley next door. Boxwood took a libertarian approach but had a conservative way of thinking. He emphasized independence and being yourself. The young men were not told what to do, only what was expected of them. If they were rude to other people, their peers asked them to leave. Jean did well in school and came from a wealthy family, but he couldn't get trigonometry out of his head. He fell into the trap of people with quick intelligence and never learned how to master something that didn't come naturally to him. So he didn't study at all this session, even though 80% of his grade was on the final and he had failed the first two tests. He still had one more hour until before he could go to bed. The test was set for 10 in the morning. He looked over at the people sleeping in his room. Roman was softly snoring, and when he moved, his bed springs squeaked. Norman was completely out. He worked so hard at sports that he always slept like he had just been turned off. This was their third year in the same triple room. They were one of the few groups that had been together since they were freshmen. They were different enough that they didn't compete with each other. Gene fell asleep in his chair at last. In that strange way that the mind of a teen works, Gene's head was full of thoughts about the universe, life and death, and the rest of his life. He would not even try to think about what would happen to him if he failed this test. Now, people think that the universe might just be a switchboard for human consciousness, where you plug into one reality for a while, turn it off, and then plug into another. Every time you lose all your memories and have to start over. Even if you're only there for a second, it will feel like you've been there forever. What a dream, huh? Jean knew that Roman was shaking him awake when he woke up. He just didn't want Roman to feel good about an easy win. Jean, get up, the test is today, come on, it's time to start making breakfast. Roman thought that everyone would react to the idea of breakfast the same way he did which was to get up and get some food no matter how much sleep they had had. Jean didn't like breakfast until it was time for lunch, except that he liked coffee more and more these days. In the common area, Norman was doing stretching exercises. His six-foot-three-inch frame was strong, but not too strong. If Norman could just choose one sport, he was probably going to win an Olympic gold medal. He loved all of them. Norman stood out because he was the only one who wasn't a jock. He played sports against himself as a standard, and while he could work as part of a team when he had to, he wasn't a team player in other ways. He liked and stuck with his few old friends. One good thing about Boxwood was that the rooms were great. Each boy had his own room with a bathroom, and the common area was big. There was a TV, but it only worked after 8 p.m., and it only got two channels after that. Yes, they had a DVD player, and the different computers they shared gave them access to almost any kind of entertainment, but the Boxwood curriculum took up a lot of their time. During class, only those who didn't pass watched much TV. Boxwood made up for the busy schedule by only running sessions for six weeks, then taking three weeks off. During class time, the students did two things, study and work out. Sleeping and eating were luxuries that they didn't have to do. Roman pulled Jean out of his chair and put him in a position that was close to standing up. Roman was a bit fat. In fact, Roman was big. Not too fat, though. He was big enough for everyone to notice, but he was a loyal friend who would cover your back, lie to your parents, and do all the other things a guy's needed. He was also a kid who got a scholarship because of his skills and grades. Jean fell into the shower and stood under the running water, trying to get some rest that way. For about 20 seconds, it worked. He was the most normal looking of the three. He was 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighed 170 pounds. He had short brown hair and no scars, tattoos, body piercings, or glass eyes. He also had the standard number of arms, legs, fingers, and toes. 
He wasn't pretty, ugly, or handsome. His mother called him cute, but Jean didn't remember many people agreeing with her. He liked sports, but he wasn't very good at them. He liked girls, but he didn't get them very often. He liked school, and he always did well enough without trying too hard. Up until now, at least. Boxwood didn't think that people should wear uniforms. Instead, they had an unspoken dress code that hadn't changed much in the last ten years. It seemed to change about every seven to ten years. The current one was made up of casual pants, dress shirts, and sneakers, which wasn't too different from what lawyers or bankers wear when they're not at work. Gene put on his clothes even though he was still tired from not getting enough sleep. He couldn't get his shirt buttons done right. It was like he had no reflexes at all. Gene, for the love of God, wake up. Allow me to help you, Norman said as he put Gene's shirt back together. The three of them went down to the dining hall for breakfast. This was a central area that connected the four dorms in the middle. As they went by in line, Mrs. Fredericks, who was in charge of the boys, was there to greet them. Jean was always interested in where she came from. People thought she was either a retired hired hitman or a professional dancer, or she could have been a librarian. No one had ever seen Mr. Fredericks, but word got around that he was either overseas or passed away because she sometimes referred to him as the colonel. Even though she was older, she still looked great. Jean thought she might be like 40 or something. She wore a skirted suit with a white blouse, which was her standard uniform as headmistress. Jean, are you ready to learn about trigonometry today? Ma'am, I hope so. It's not simple, Jean replied. Mrs. Fredericks always seemed honest, so she deserved an honest answer. Jean, best of luck. She looked at the boy in front of her. The three people who shared a room sat in a corner to eat. Let me help, Jean. We have about 30 minutes to go over what we've learned. Roman proposed, I know that Roman is smart, but 30 minutes, I need a whole day. Look at it this way, Jean. I'm sure I can help you answer at least one question correctly, more than you would if we didn't do it. Roman told us, Roman, thanks, but I'm going to take a nap until the test. Jean didn't go to his first class and went back to his room. He had about an hour to rest before the test, and he couldn't decide if he should study or go to sleep. Sleep won. But everything went wrong when he figured out what was wrong. When Jean tried to take off his shirt, he found that the buttons were on the wrong side. The side woman clothes normally have. Why is this happening? He spoke out loud. He went to his closet and looked at his other shirts. All of them were done from left to right. Norms were, too, and Roman. Jean knew about blouses for women. When he was home alone, he had borrowed clothes from his mother more than once. Dressing up in women's clothes had become a part of his dreams, but he rarely did it in real life. He was very careful because he was so afraid. No one knew his secret, and so far he hasn't felt the need to do it at school. So now Jean had the first strange thing. It would not be the last time. When he saw what time it was, he knew he had to get to the test. He ran as fast as he could across the campus to get to the exam room. He didn't understand the first question. I didn't think of anything. The next one was just as bad. 90 minutes had never felt so long to Jean. He walked back to his room in a complete daze after the test. He was surrounded by a magnetic field of defeat. He managed to find his bed, fell into it, and let sleep take him away. Jean knew Roman was shaking him awake when he did. Jean, get up, the test is today. Come on, it's time to start making breakfast, Roman told us. He stood up straight. What do you mean, the final was yesterday? Calm down, Jean. Today is the last day. You must have gone to sleep last night while studying. Roman stood back up. He walked into the room. Jean looked at them and closed his eyes. They wore dress shirts and casual pants and were ready for breakfast. It was just that each of them was wearing long earrings with jewels that hung down. Then he saw the necklaces, rings, and bracelets. He also noticed that the buttons on the shirt went from left to right. What are those earrings for? Jean asked both of them at the same time. They belonged to my dad. This year for Christmas, he gave them to me. Jean, you knew that because you had borrowed them twice, Norman said. Jean, you don't need ours. You have a Tiffany's store in your case. Roman gave a grin. Jean stood up and took a shower. 
His watch, which had been a big chronometer but was now a thin gold case with diamonds, told him it was the day of the test. And he did have a large jewelry case in his bathroom. It was on a vanity. He saw gold posts in his ears when he looked in the mirror. Jean started shaking. He stood there in a towel, which was still wet. As he shook, drops of water fell from his body. Jean, move along. Make sure to bring your lucky bracelets. Roman put his hand up. He chose a shirt and pants and dressed himself. Sitting at his vanity, he combed his hair and chose his jewelry out of instinct or habit. He took out his post's earrings and put in some emerald bangles and a necklace that went with them. He grabbed a handful of worn-out bracelets that had been broken in a few places. His good luck charms. He saw that his dress shirts only had three-quarters sleeves. Jean's mind was going very fast while this was going on. He knew this was wrong and not how things should be. He had also watched enough science fiction shows, especially that old series from the 1950s, to know that he should keep his mouth shut and act like he didn't know what was going on. People who didn't follow along when they were suddenly somewhere else always got in trouble. In the mirror, he looked at himself. He thought it was funny and normal. They went to eat breakfast. Jean, are you ready to learn about trigonometry today? Mrs. Fredericks asked, dressed like Jean always remembered her to be. Ma'am, I hope so. It's not simple, Jean replied. Jean, best of luck. She looked at the boy in front of her. The three people who shared a room sat in a corner to eat. Everyone in the room, including the boys, was wearing a lot of jewelry. Jean, I'll help you with your math. We have about 30 minutes to go over what we've learned, Roman proposed. I know that Roman is smart, but 30 minutes? I need a whole day. Look at it this way, Jean. I'm sure I can help you answer at least one question correctly, more than you would if we didn't do it, Roman told us. Roman, thanks, but I'm going to take a nap until the test. Jean returned to his room. He looked at Roman and Norman's rooms and found that the only thing that was different was their jewelry cases. He also noticed that Norman's swimsuit calendar had not changed and that the girls were just as they should be. When he saw what time it was, he knew he had to get to the test. He ran as fast as he could across the campus to get to the exam room. He didn't understand the first question. I didn't think of anything. The next one was just as bad. 90 minutes had never felt so long to Jean. He walked back to his room in a complete daze after the test. He was surrounded by a magnetic field of defeat. He managed to find his bed, fell into it, and let sleep take him away. Jean knew that Roman was shaking him awake when he woke up. Jean, get up. The test is today. Come on, it's time to start making breakfast, Roman told us. Roman was standing there with a girdle up to his waist and black nylons. Today, or yesterday, or whenever this was, his earrings were big hoops. Aside from that, everything else seemed fine. Jean, you asked me to shave your back today, but you haven't even showered or shaved your legs and armpits yet. Norman walked in wearing a pair of nylons with garter belts attached to them over a pair of satin pants. Jean noticed that he was almost bald, which made him look very different from the Norman he knew. With his curly black hair on his chest and back, Norman looked like he was part bear or sheep. Jean, hurry up. We only have 20 minutes to eat before they won't let us. Jean jumped into the shower and washed his hair and body in a hurry. He noticed the strange shaving cream and razor with a curved handle. When he picked it up, his legs were shaved by their own bodies. As he went back to his room, Jean thought about what to wear. The clothes in his drawer had changed. He now had three drawers, for starters. As he looked for something to wear, he grabbed a bunch of satiny garter belts and nylons. In one drawer, he found a variety of what his mother called foundation garments, such as Roman-style girdles, waist cinchers, and things that looked like old-fashioned corsets, but were made of modern materials. Jean decided to go without figure support today because he didn't think he was fat. Not skinny and chiseled like Norm, but also not at all like Roman. He picked up a shirt and saw that many of them were sleeveless and had necklines. There was almost nothing they could do. He thought, well, at least it wouldn't be too hot outside. 
After fighting with the garter belt over the undies, he was fumbling with a pair of sheer black nylons. He thought that if Roman was wearing them, he could probably get away with how they looked. The clothes reminded him of the few times he had actually tried to be a woman. They fit perfectly and felt a lot like the pants he wore back then. So Jean went out, wearing a sleeveless top over casual pants and necklaces, hoop earrings, and bracelets that clanked. The pants didn't seem to have changed much. Maybe the fabric was a bit softer. He found some shoes and decided to wear black loafers instead of his usual sneakers because they looked better with the nylons. Jean, are you ready to learn about trigonometry today? Mrs. Fredericks asked. Ma'am, I hope so. It's not simple, Jean replied. Jean, best of luck. She looked at the boy in front of her. The three people who shared a room sat in a corner to eat. Jean's clothes went well with everyone else's. Roman looked much better when his belly was held in, and Jean could see that Roman wasn't the only one who looked slimmer. Jean, I'll help you with your math. We have about 30 minutes to go over what we've learned, Roman proposed. I know that Roman is smart, but 30 minutes? I need a whole day. Look at it this way, Jean. I'm sure I can help you answer at least one question correctly more than you would if we didn't do it, Roman told us. Roman, thanks, but I'm going to take a nap until the test. Jean returned to his room. He looked in Roman's and Norman's rooms and found that their closets had been changed just like his. When he saw what time it was, he knew he had to get to the test. He ran as fast as he could across the campus to get to the exam room. He didn't understand the first question. I didn't think of anything. The next one was just as bad. 90 minutes had never felt so long to Jean. He walked back to his room in a complete daze after the test. He was surrounded by a magnetic field of defeat. He managed to find his bed, fell into it, and let sleep take him away. Jean knew Roman was shaking him awake when he woke up. Get up, the test is today. Come on, it's time to start making breakfast, Roman told us. Roman was standing there in a girdle that went up to his waist and was tied to a pair of sheer brown nylons. Today, or yesterday, or whenever this was, his ear studs were big pieces of jewelry. His hair, which used to be short, had grown out and was now pinned up on the back of his head. Jean didn't know how long it had been. Aside from that, everything else seemed fine. Norman walked in wearing a pair of black nylons with garter belts attached to them over his satin pants. Today, he went with hoops. Jean noticed that he still didn't have any hair on his torso, but he was more interested in the blonde wig on his head. Jean, hurry up. We only have 20 minutes to eat before they won't let us, he said. Norman. Jean jumped into the shower and washed his hair and body in a hurry. He didn't think about what he was doing and just used shampoos and conditioners that seemed natural to him. He had a wide range of choices. He picked up the razor and his legs started shaving themselves. He could shave his face and underarms because the mirror didn't fog up. Roman wore a red-haired version of Norman's wig, which was pinned up. Dry your hair and get dressed, for goodness sake! After what seemed like an eternity, he just let his hands do the work of putting his hair up, and then he turned to his 20 wigs, which were all on forms. His bathroom and dressing room seemed to have gotten three times bigger. He saw that some of the wigs were in clear packages with tickets that said, Fred's wig service, we pick up and drop off. Jean thought about what to wear. Aside from the pants, not much has changed. They didn't have any pockets and fit closer around his backside and thighs. Jean saw a bunch of purses. One of them seemed to have his wallet, comb, keys, and what he thought was an atomizer for cologne. He smelled it and it smelled like his aftershave, but stronger. He chose emeralds once more. He finally figured out where to put the garter belt and chose a pair of sheer hose with a diamond pattern. Many of his shoes were now sandals with open toes, so he chose the simplest pair he could find. So Jean went into the common room where Roman made fun of him. Get up, you fool. Two years ago, we finally got those old, stuffy guys to change the dress code so we could wear wigs. Now you're trying to start a counter-revolution. Do you want to be in charge of how your hair looks? We had no other choice, as you know, Roman went on, still laughing. Norman gave a grin. Sorry, guys, I'm not awake yet. Jean went back to his room to rest. Jean chose a page boy wig that was black and put it on his head. He didn't think about it, but his hands reached for bobby pins. 
He let them do what they wanted. He was learning to calm down and let his body and reflexes take care of things. The three people on board went to eat breakfast. Jean, are you ready to learn about trigonometry today? Mrs. Fredericks asked. Ma'am, I hope so. It's not simple, Jean replied. Jean, best of luck. She looked at the boy in front of her. The three people who shared a room sat in a corner to eat. Jean's clothes went well with everyone else's. The wigs added a lot of color to the room with their many different shades. Some of the boys chose blues and purples. Jean, I'll help you with your math. We have about 30 minutes to go over what we've learned, Roman proposed. I know that Roman is smart, but 30 minutes? I need a whole day. Look at it this way, Jean. I'm sure I can help you answer at least one question correctly, more than you would if we didn't do it, Roman told us. Thanks, Roman. But I need you to pay attention to something. Jean tried to explain what was going on, like how the world was changing every day, but the same things kept happening. Roman was not only smart, but he also thought in a unique way. He also knew the truth when Jean told it. Norman was also worried, but he did not say anything. So Jean, you want us to believe that you keep waking up and living the same day over and over again, and that the only thing that changes is what people wear? And you mess up your final and then pass out so you can start over. Now, I'd say that you just woke up from some kind of anxiety attack and that everything will be fine tomorrow, but you seem worried, so here's what I can do. I'm going to write down some words that mean something to me, but not to anyone else. Remember them, and then give me the paper back. If the next time you wake up and we all turned girly, then explain this to me again and tell me the phrase. But only say it to me so that no one else can hear. Now forget about this. Calm down and go do your best on the final. I told you I'd help you with your math homework. Thanks for watching. Check out Patreon if you want to have early access to the other parts. If not, it will be online in a couple of days.